G'day, Ben from Melbourne here, and today I'd like to talk about some of my favourite Australian music from the 80s. So let's get straight into it. First up, Bang on 1980 is X with their album X Aspirations. Um, this one was produced by Lobby Lloyd, the guitar god from the 70s and 60s, known for his work with Coloured Balls, Aztecs, the Purple Hearts and the Wild Cherries. This band features Ian Rylan, formerly of uh, Rose Tattoo, had left the band by their debut, but they did record um, several of so the songs that he wrote for them. This is such a primal, intense record um, with that rhythm sludge with Steve Lucas's guitars just piercing holes through that and his raw vocals over the top. Songs which I really like, ones Suck Suck, Police and Good On Your Baby. Um, they wouldn't release another record for five years, which was also a great record, but for me, Exasperations is the one. Next up, we've got The Church with The Blurred Crusade. This, is where, this was their second record. The single Almost With You come off this one. Um, they had scored a little bit of success before this with the single Unguarded Moment off their debut record of Skins and Hearts. And of course, a couple of years after this, the big one with Starfish and the single Under the Milky Way. This for me is my favorite one. It's very much got its foot in that Paisley Underground Birds Influence 60s style, but with the church has that kind of gloomy, atmospheric, gothy thing going on underneath as well, but it doesn't get too bogged down in the in the gloomy, gothy mire. There's enough pop hooks on this to keep it afloat. Yeah, one of my uh, favourite church records and a great indie pop record of its era. Next up, from Brisbane we've got Public Execution. Now these guys were an, a great example of Australian hardcore punk at the time. Sadly, been long forgotten as they only released a few seven inches um, and this is what this is, is a compilation of those seven inches plus um, some demos that they did. They must have been held in high regard at the time as they managed to score the support slot for the Dead Kennedys tour around the time this came out. Um, fantastic compilation. Would have been great to hear what else these guys could have done. But sadly, no more. But we've got this. Public execution. Next. The birthday party. What? a way to finish your career as a band. The Bad CDP combined with the Mutiny EP. These guys are at the top of their game. They might have been infighting like cats and dogs. Um, they were already down to a four piece by this stage with Phil Calvert leaving the band or having been sacked, depending on who you believe. But Mick Harvey, the multi-instrumentalist of the band, of course, he sits in and forms a fantastic rhythm section with Tracy Pugh for Roland S. Howard to just rip it up with his incredibly distinctive guitar playing. Probably my favourite Australian guitarist of all time. Um, and not forgetting uh, some guy called Nick Cave howling like a crazy man over the top. This is definitely not the crooning Nick Cave that we've come to know and love. This is a man possessed when he's singing. This is absolute classic of its time, probably one of the best post-punk records um, to come out of this country. Next, we have The Scientists with their mini LP, Blood Red River. Now, by this stage, Kim Salmon, lead singer and guitarist, was the last man standing. Uh, Completely different lineup from the debut album um, and completely different sound. So don't expect more of the frantic, romantic 
although great, but more on that sort of catchy bubblegum punk style of things. Um, this is that swampy punk blues in the vein of uh, the Cramps and the Gun Club. Uh, fantastic release. These guys have been, you know, cited as the first grunge band. Um, I don't know if that's true. I just know that they're awesome and uh, pretty much everything they did is worth picking up. The Sinus with Blood Red River. Next up, another long forgotten band, um, Division 4. This was originally a cassette only release. I think this was from around 1983. Uh, these guys were a bit different uh, as far as their lineup goes. They were uh, synth driven, two bass players, and a drummer. They had that kind of paranoid, throbbing, uh, yeah, post-punk synthy sound, really interesting, quite different from what else was going on at the time. Um, and this is a, yeah, I, I was unaware of them until this reissue, um, really worth picking up, um, Division 4. Next, we've got the Celibate Rifles with their self-titled album, otherwise known as Five Languages. I wonder why. This continues Australia's love affair with that Detroit sound started by Radio Birdman and yeah, a slew of other Australian bands since putting their own uh, slant on that. This has got the, of course, bulletproof rhythm section and driving guitars and Damien Lovelock's gravelly voice over the top with something which was a bit different for this style of band who got, got quite a few environmentally conscious lyrics going on, which was probably a little bit of anom an anomaly at the time. Um, great, great album. This is their second one. Um, you can pretty much dip into anything in the Celebrate Rifles catalogue and you can't lose. I think this is maybe an original Hot Records one too, but that's for smarter people than me to um, argue. Next, The Laughing Clown's Law of Nature. As if Ed Cooper hadn't achieved enough already being a member of the greatest punk rock band of all time, The Saints. You could argue with me, but you'd be totally wrong. Anyway, enough of that crap. This is brilliant. Um, this would be what you would call the extension of the later Saints idea of trying to mix up horns and other sounds into what was essentially a punk rock rhythm section, whereas Ed Cooper went full on with this here with his brilliant jazzy drummer Jeffrey Wegner scronking horns. It was no longer a sort of stabbing rhythmic horn sound. Saxophone all over this. Uh, great track, Eternally Yours. Probably the best record um, out of the Laughing Clowns catalogue. Um, hard to believe he was pumping out stuff with the Laughing Clowns and also um, continuing a solo career at the same time. And then if that wasn't enough towards the end of the 80s, formed the Aints in reaction to some feeling between himself and Chris Bailey, who retained the Saints name. Great, great record. Laughing Clowns, Law of Nature. All right, The New Christ, Divine Rights. Now, this is uh, made up of uh, a lot of The New Christ, seven inches, um, such as Like a Curse, Born Out of Time, uh, Dropping Like Flies, and I believe The Black Hole was the other one. Now this, if the vocals sound familiar, it's of course Rob Younger, formerly of Radio Birdman. Um, New Christ were a bit of an all-star band. At, at one time or another, they featured members who were about to join or had been in bands such as um, Hoodoo Gurus, Celibate Rifles, um, who else? Uh, oh, of course, Radio Birdman and um, The Divinals, Charlie Owen, of course. Uh, yeah, this is just a powerful rock and roll record with um, 
fantastic songs, great drumming. Mark Kingsmill um, went on to play with Hoodoo Gurus. I think he played with the Hitman before that. Sorry, the Hitmen, not the Hitman. Um, yeah, he. I don't think he's drummed like this before or since. I love it. New Christ, Divine Rights. Next, we've got the Johnnies, the cowpunk legends, featuring none other than Spencer P. Jones. Uh, this is probably where he first made his name, um, although he'd already played on the first Be Suburban album and um, was a big hand in that, but that was kind of like a one-off thing at the time. I don't think the Be Suburban anyone was expecting to go on with anything because they all had their own um, projects going on and the Johnnies were actually signed to Mushroom Records, so this was Spencer's main gig at the time. And uh, it's got the great songs, um, the In Injun Joe, um, the day Marty Robbins died and there's going to be a showdown. But the whole album has that great feel of those tight sort of countryish um, harmonies and Western style guitars. Um, whole album's fantastic. It's a, a change of pace from some of the punky more swampy stuff that... Um, and garage stuff, which I've shown before this, but really, really good. If you like anything Spencer P. Jones does, this would be right in your ballpark there. Um, yeah, they would have been a fun night out with their big 10 gallon um, cowboy hats and the hay bales on stage. Um, but yeah, sadly, Spencer's with us no more. So we don't get to see any of the great projects he um, was involved with and no more solo albums from him. Um, anything Spencer's on, check it out. It's always worthwhile. All right, um, I think I'm going to stop there and I'll think about doing a part two because there's a million other great um, Australian bands from the 80s, which I think I've only got up to about 86 or something like that so far. Anyway, thanks for watching, take care and we'll see you soon.